Are you looking for the perfect morning routine? Something that will wake you up, get you pumped, kickstart your productivity and get you ready for the day ahead? Well the bad news is most people make the same simple mistake when they're planning their morning routines. So in this video we're going to explore what that is and give you a better way to create your own. And at the end of the video I'll share my own morning routine and hopefully by that point you'll understand why it works perfectly, at least for me. Okay, so firstly, it is definitely valuable to at least have a morning routine. Dozens of research papers covering thousands of people show that when you're in the habit of doing something in the same time and place every day, you hardly even have to think about it. You just get on with it. In my experience, that counts double in the morning. Things are really under your control, nothing's had the time to get away from you, most people aren't even awake, and so you can just get a whole bunch of stuff done before anybody else is bothering you. And so it's probably not surprising that people love researching routines. The book Daily Rituals describes a day in the life of 161 different artists, scientists, and other creatives, and some of them are absolutely fascinating. Charles Darwin went for a solitary walk every day before work, Beethoven used to count out exactly 60 beans for his morning cup of coffee, and Victor Hugo swallowed two raw eggs after getting a daily letter from his mistress. The thing you notice after you read enough though is that there's no consistency between any of these routines. Anthony Trollope used to get up and write 250 words every 15 minutes before he went to his job at the post office. Hunter S. Thompson got up at 3pm and didn't start writing until midnight but both of them were wildly productive. So what's the one thing that all of these routines have in common? You can think about that while we move into part two, but for now, just remember that the key is having a routine at all. Okay, so when I was young, most kids learned to ride a bike by using one of these. Now, most kids learn to ride a bike by using one of these. So what's the difference? Well, the second one is a balanced bike, which is designed to give children the coordination they need to actually ride a bike, which is something that apparently does really well. Because the thing is about cycling, pedaling isn't actually the difficult bit. Balance is the difficult bit, and you don't really develop that by using stabilizers. So you can work on balance by taking something away from the bike and making it a simpler experience, i.e. the pedals, but not really by adding something on, i.e. the stabilizers. And so stabilizers are an example of what's called an additive solution, while balance bikes are an example of what's called a subtractive one. And so a while ago, scientists started to notice that minimalist solutions like balance bikes were actually quite uncommon and they started to wonder whether there was a psychological reason behind that. Because the key is, when they're faced with a problem, most people seem to prefer solutions that involve adding stuff rather than taking it away. In one experiment, for instance, volunteers were asked to stabilize the roof of a Lego structure that was held up by a single block, and almost all of them used extra blocks to do it rather than taking blocks away, even when they had to pay for the blocks. In another study, they were asked to make a pattern symmetrical, which again, most people did by adding stuff to the pattern rather than taking it away. This led them to the conclusion that additive solutions have a sort of privileged status. They tend to come to mind quickly and easily, Subtractive solutions are not necessarily harder to consider, but they take more effort to find. So what does this have to do with morning routines? Well, when you look at a lot of the morning routines being suggested on the internet, they're about adding things rather than taking them away. There are probably lots of things that you feel like you should do, and it just feels intuitively like adding extra stuff in if you can find the time to do it somehow, is gonna help. And that's why you see people commit to stuff like journaling, cold showers, gratitude, meditation, working out, whatever else. And this is also something you see elsewhere. In my gym, I quite often see people like foam rolling, stretching, and doing incredibly elaborate mobility routines that take almost as long as my workout, and then not really having the time to work out afterwards. Or, when they decide to eat better, a lot of people devise elaborate regimes based on all the things they have to eat, rather than simplifying stuff down to the basics. And just to be clear, I'm not saying that any of this stuff is bad, I'm just saying that it makes your life a bit harder. If you have six different elements in your morning routine, then the first day that you wake up late or have some extra work to finish off or your kid is sick, it derails your whole day because you just can't find time to fit it all in. So what did the artists and scientists we were just talking about do and what should you be doing? That brings us to keeping the goal the goal. Just in case you haven't worked it out yet, what Trollope, Beethoven and Darwin all did was they kept things simple. They did one or two things to get them in the right frame of mind for the day, and then they got up and got after their main project as hard as they could. And this comes back to a line I like from strength coach Dan John, which is, the goal is to keep the goal the goal. As we've talked about before, Progress in anything takes time and sustained effort, and it's very easy to get sidetracked. And so whether your goal is to become financially independent, or to write a book that's meaningful to a whole load of people, the most important thing is to stay focused on that one goal and keep chipping away at it day after day and year after year. And so an important question to ask yourself is, 
does my behavior match my goals? Does it? Does it really? Now, maybe you'll find that working out or going for a walk feeds your creativity and makes you more productive. It definitely does for me. But if you're adding stuff to your morning routine just because you think that's what productive people do, then it's time to take a look at your plan and start thinking about subtractive rather than additive solutions. That's what I did, and now I have two morning routines. Four mornings a week, I get up, get my son his breakfast, drink a bunch of water, have a coffee, and write. The other three mornings, I get up, get my son his breakfast, drink a bunch of water, have a coffee, and go to the gym. And it's working out great. And if you wanna see what I do for the rest of my day and week, then check out this video.